guys, it's time to do some maths. It's time to do some calculation. I don't want to bore you with the details. My valuation is based on the discounted cash flow model. This is the model that is most widely used for, for valuing stocks. Um, for those of you who don't know, basically free cash flow is the amount of cash generated by the company that is basically physically available for the company and can be used for buying back stocks, paying out dividends, paying out debt, making acquisitions, or reinvesting uh, in the company. In, in terms of this model, what we are going to do is to project the free cash flow um, for our projection period. So I'm going to use a five-year long projection period. At the end of the projection period, we would have, we would define a terminal value for the company. And if we agree this terminal value and uh, with the discounted value of the cash flows generated over the projection period, we would be able to calculate the fair intrinsic value of a share. The starting point of this calculation is the revenue. For the revenue, we have the latest number from, from 2021. You can see it on the screen. It's slightly above 1.5 billion. And I'm going to use the assumptions based on the management's expectations. So the management is expecting a revenue growth of 30% over a five-year period. I'm going to use this number. So I calculate it based on this 30% revenue growth number, the revenues till 2026. In order to, to define the free cash flows, we have to uh, make assumptions about the free cash flow margin. So this, this indicates how, how many percent of the revenue would be represented by the, by the free cash flows. Uh, from the latest earnings report, we've seen a free cash flow margin of 28%. But I need to highlight that the management is expecting some kind of margin decrease um, because of different factors. I don't want to get in more details, but a lot of the employees are, for instance, returning to the office. This is pressuring slightly the margins. And I also want to be conservative in this regards. So I'm going to use a margin of 25%. So we have the revenues, we have the margins, and we are able to calculate the free cash flows for the projection period. And by discounting back these cash flows, we get the present value uh, of these cash flows over the projection period. Now we need to basically calculate the terminal value uh, at the end of the projection period. For this regards, I'm going to use two methods and I'm going to average them out. So the first method is a perpetual growth method. Basically this assumes that the company is going to grow eternally um, by an expected growth rate of the economy. So usually we are, go we are going to use, uh, we are using like a lower rate here. I think that in terms of Palantir, we could eventually use a higher rate but um, just being conservative, I assume the 3% growth rate, perpetual growth rate for the company. So this results a terminal value of 20 billion. And I'm also going to uh, estimate the terminal value by a different method. This is a multiple method. So for this one, we are going to take uh, the free cash flow at the end of the projection period, and we are going to apply a market multiple to it to get the terminal value. And for this reason, I'm going to use the average market multiple of price per free cash flow that is available today on the market. So the price per free cash flow multiple today for the sector that uh, Palantir is active in is 20. So I'm going to use that, uh, that ratio. I want to emphasize, guys, that I'm super, super conservative. So I do believe that in five years, Palantir's price to free cash flow multiple is going to be above the sector median, the sector, sector average, because my expectation is that Palantir is going to grow faster uh, than the average company in the sector. But as I said, I'm going to try, I'm trying to be super conservative here, and that's why I'm calculating um, with, um, with the, with the sector, sector average. So we can see the terminal value, it's 28 billion US dollars. And in order to get the terminal value, I'm averaging out these two, basically these two results. And as a terminal value, I got 24 uh, billion US dollars. So this is going to be the terminal value. So we have the discounted values of the free cash flows for the projection period, and then the terminal value. As a discount factor, I used 8% discount rate. So this can be basically found on different websites on the internet, calculated specifically for Palantir. So by summarizing the discounted value of the free cash flow and adding to them, um, the terminal value, we get the enterprise value. The enterprise value is 
20 billion US dollars. The company has 2 billion, a little bit above 2 billion US dollars cash, and it has no debt. The cash has to be added to the enterprise value. So we got, we, we, we got as such the equity value, which is 22, a little bit above 22 billion US dollars. So this is the value that is basically for the shareholders. And now we are ready to calculate the intrinsic value of one single share. For this one, we need to get uh, the number of shares outstanding. Currently, and this is also taken for the Q, from the Q4 earnings report, the number of shares outstanding is slightly above 2 billion shares. So if we divide the equity value with the numbers, number of shares outstanding, we get the equity, equity value per share. This is the fair intrinsic value of a Palantir share. This is how much you should pay for a Palantir share today. And guys, I'm not sure if you're surprised or not, but it's very, very close to the uh, current stock price. The, the number that I got is 11.10 US dollars. So this is what I would pay uh, for a Palantir share today. But as said, all this valuation was based on super conservative assumptions. So let's say, just, just want to perform an exercise. Let's say that we use another market multiple to calculate the terminal value. Because as I said, I truly believe that Palantir at the end of the projection period could be valued by higher multiple than the sector median. I can't exclude that it's going to be valued at a double multiple as the sector median. So let's see what would happen if the price to free cash flow multiple would be double as what I used previously. In this case, Palantir's fair share price would be 16 US dollars. And let's see if additionally, we also change the free cash flow margin uh, to, the current, uh, to the current data, which is 28%. This would result a stock price a fair intrinsic value for a stock of 18 US dollars. So my conclusion from this valuation is that Palantir's current price is very close to the value calculated based on the most conservative assumptions, based on the worst case scenarios, based on the real bear case. So if anything comes back as more positive uh, than this most, most, most conservative scenario or this bear case, then Palantir would reflect or would represent a considerable upside potential. So my, my, my assumption is, or my conclusion is that Palantir, based on the most conservative assumption, is fairly valued at, at the moment. But taking into account that there's a huge likelihood that the company on the, on the longer term, and in long term, on long term, I mean multiple years, three years, five years, eventually 10 years even. On, on the 10 years period, for instance, it can exceed these conservative assumptions. I think that for those of you guys who are considering buying Palantir for the real long term, it would really make sense to open up positions at these uh, discounted stock price levels because basically the upside can be considerable. And also from a valuation perspective, so if we take a very quick look at Palantir's valuation metrics, um, as the company is not generating a profit yet, we can only take a look at the price to sales ratio. The price to sales ratio is eventually still a little bit high. So I would be more comfortable with lower values than this one. Um, but from a historical perspective, Palantir started to be cheap and companies growing with rates like Palantir, like 30, 35%, 40% are valued with multiples even higher than this one. So Palantir has a price to sales multiple of 18 currently. From a historical perspective, this can be considered low. Also compared to some high growth peers, this is not super high. For instance, compared to Microsoft that has a price to sales of 13, it's high, but let's be honest, Palantir, even if, if it's not generating profit yet, it's growing at the almost double rates as, as Microsoft. So as you can see, we've seen price to sales ratios well above 30, 30, 30 35. So currently the 18 uh, price to sales can be co considered historically cheap. Yes, the latest, uh, the latest report was a disappointment, but that's one data point. That's one data point. And on the long term, it doesn't really change the narrative related to the stock. So all depends, all ties back to the execution, but taking into account the total addressable market, taking into account the potential use cases and of the company, and also the fact that based on the momentum, based on the momentum gathering in the commercial sector, 
Palantir can be on the doorstep of a commercial breakthrough, I think that at the current price levels, it's really worth considering opening up a position in the stock and holding it, of course, on the long term. So guys, this was pretty much it that I wanted to tell you, tell you about Palantir. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you support in um, formulating your trading strategy in Palantir for the next period. I hope it supported those ones who went through severe pain today, just like myself, but nothing has changed uh, in my mind related to Palantir. I bought it for the long term, for five years, 10 years, we would see. And I'm really, really sure that Palantir is going to be a real Tesla one day, but we will have to be patiently. We will have to wait patiently for that. So once again, please don't forget to subscribe because I'm coming with new updates in an entertaining manner about the stock markets, but it, I would never lack real research and real analysis. So no clickbait, no bullshit, just real stock market research. Thank you very much for following my video, guys. Take care. See you very soon and have a successful trading session tomorrow. Cheers. Bye-bye.